In this video, we're going to discuss how glaciers are capable of eroding sediment and rocks that they're flowing on top of. Just like a river, we're going to see that glaciers, as they flow, are going to be eroding sediment as well as transporting it somewhere else. And because glaciers are so large in size, this is going to be a huge volume or a large amount of sediment that it's eroding and transporting somewhere else. But unlike a stream, once we have some kind of sediment stuck in a glacier, it cannot settle out. Instead, it's going to be stuck inside of that glacier until that ice melts back into liquid water. This is one of the things that makes glaciers so unique is the fact that it's capable of carrying really large chunks of rock. A stream is never going to be powerful enough or have enough energy to move an entire boulder, but glacial ice can. So in this image on the left, we're looking at glacial striations. This is where we've had a glacier flowing over a rock and the sediment inside of the glacier has dug into the rock and scraped these parallel lines inside of it as the ice and the rock inside of the ice flowed over it. So it kind of looks like someone has just dug their fingernails into this rock and pulled them straight downwards. And that's basically what happened with all of the rocks inside of that ice. But we can also see that glaciers are capable of polishing solid rock as well. Now if we have really small pieces of sediment stuck in the bottom of the ice, when it flows over it, it's going to act like sandpaper to that rock. It's going to smooth it down and polish it off like we see with this image here on the right. There are two major ways that glaciers are capable of eroding the surface of the land and creating sediment. And these are plucking and abrasion. So plucking is kind of like plucking hair. We're going to have bits of rock that have been fractured that are going to be plucked from the surface. And a lot of the times this can happen whenever we have liquid water getting inside of the cracks and then freezing. If you remember ice wedging from our chapter on rocks way back at the beginning of the semester, when liquid water gets in cracks and freezes, it causes those cracks to widen and deepen, eventually breaking off entire chunks of rock. And those chunks of rock can then be carried away by the glacier. But our second type of erosion is called abrasion. And this is where we have those smaller pieces of ice that are polishing down a surface, like we saw in the last slide. If it's larger pieces of sediment that have been eroded, we're going to leave glacial striations, those parallel scratches in the surface of a rock. And depending on which direction those striations are going, it can tell us which direction that ancient glacier flowed in. So if we see these parallel marks moving down towards the south, this tells us that when the glacier was still around, it was flowing towards the south, leaving those scratches or striations in the rock that it flowed across. The amount of sediment that a glacier can erode is going to be dependent on a lot of different factors though. One of these is just going to be the rate of glacial movement. How fast is this glacier flowing? The faster the glacier is flowing, the more erosion it's going to cause. It also depends on the thickness of the ice. The thicker the ice is, the more that it weighs. So we'll have more erosion along the bottom on the land that that glacier is flowing over when it is thicker and weighs more. But it also depends on the shape, abundance, and hardness of the rock that's being carried inside of the ice. If we have really jagged rocks, they're going to be better at eroding the surface than if we had smooth pebbles. If we have a lot of rocks in that ice, it's going to erode more than if we had fewer. And if we have harder rocks, it's going to be better at eroding than if we had soft, easily broken rocks. And then finally, it all depends on the erodibility of the land beneath the glacier. If it's on top of solid granite, an igneous rock for example, this is one of the hardest rocks we have on our planet, it's not going to erode very much. 
But if we have this glacier on top of limestone, like what we have here in Florida, because it's a very soft rock, the rock is going to erode a lot more. It's just going to break as that glacier flows over it.